everyone, and welcome to theCUBE's presentation of the AWS Startup Showcase, Open Cloud Innovations. This is season two, episode one of our showcase ongoing series. We're covering very exciting startups from the AWS ecosystem, and we're going to be talking about the open source community. I'm your host, Lisa Martin, and today I'm excited to be joined by Robbie Myra, the head of product and partner marketing at Sneak. Robbie's here to talk with me about developer security for your digital transformation. Robbie, it's great to have you on theCUBE. Hi, thanks Lisa, nice to be here. So talk to me about what's going on in developer land. They're under a lot of pressure. They're, a lot of them are building apps with open source, but what is Sneak seeing from the developer's lens? Well, from the developer's lens, there's a lot of pressure to build fast. Uh, and that's probably the biggest challenge, right? We're in a world of digital transformation where everybody's trying to compete no matter what industry you're in, right, on the, the technology and on the quality of your software or the capabilities uh, of your software, which puts a lot of pressure on developers to build fast. Um, that causes them to do a few things. One, it causes them to, build, to develop in a way where they're doing constant iteration. And so models that would have enabled a security check to come in at the end aren't working anymore because they don't have time. Uh, for those security checks. It also causes them to do a good thing, which is to leverage uh, other people's code when they can, like open source, uh, so they can just focus on, on their own functionality. And that's true whether they're building new functionality or modernizing legacy applications by moving them to the cloud. So if a high percentage of, of app code, 80 to 90% is open source, mm -hmm. then that opens up. Talk to me about what, where the vulnerabilities are and how you guys help customers and developers address that? Yeah, the vulnerabilities can be anywhere, but the, the key is that that point, right? If you're using open source in a typical application, 80 to 90 plus percent of the lines of code in that application are going to be open source code. They're code somebody else wrote that you don't have a direct relationship with. And yet you own the risk that whatever they may have, whatever vulnerabilities may be in their code, you now own that risk. So what we're trying to do, what Sneak is trying to do is enable developers to leverage open source, but do that uh, securely. And then we also help them with the 10% that they write uh, as well and, and do that all in one really easy environment for a developer that fits into their workflow and into their uh, daily life. So security should shift left. I've had the chance to talk with a couple of, uh, do you call them sneakers? <laughs> Maybe we do. We'll call them sneak oh, you <laughs> do, oh good. A couple of sneakers recently, we've talked about security shifting lap. That's not a new concept, but I'd love mm -hmm. to dig in more to how Sneak and AWS do that. And I'm also curious if what you're doing helps, I mean, we've talked about the cybersecurity skills gap for a long time now. Does what you guys do help address that? It does because it's really leveraging a resource that that is there, right? There's the number of developers worldwide is growing from, depending on who you believe for these numbers and their estimated numbers, right? But 25 million to 50 million over roughly a five year uh, period that's already started. So we're somewhere in the 30 now, right? Meanwhile, the security jobs, there's something like 9 million cybersecurity people in the world and that's all cybersecurity roles. It's, it's a much shorter, uh, smaller chunk that are application security. Uh, folks, and there's three and a half million unfilled cybersecurity roles. So you can't get cybersecurity people and keep using the current model you're using, but just scale it linearly. You have to change things. And Sneak's belief is the way you change things is you have the developers be part of your security solution, which means they need to have the ability to not only develop, but to develop securely. And that's our concept of developer security. We build tools and a platform that enables developers to be the first part of the security solution and enables security teams rather than individually auditing and fixing things to develop a process, govern the process, guide the development teams, but let the developers own that first step of security. And that's really how you solve that scale problem. When you're talking with customers, is this kind of a better together scenario, developers and security folks, are you helping them align culturally, because this is a change. Absolutely. I think one of the biggest misconceptions out there is that there's a tension between security and development. And I think that's because organizationally there might be, right? Security is responsible for risk and developers is responsible for speed of innovation. And the faster you innovate, potentially there's more risk. So there might be some organizational tension, but at the human level, people understand each other. They understand the pressures that the other one's going through. They just don't have an easy way to work together. And if you can help them get that, 
then they, it, it really takes off. It, the relationships form, they'll build human to human programs like security champion programs and things to, to integrate the teams because they're both going after the same goal. Both sides want to build awesome technology and grow in whatever market they're in. Right, and of course, with the need to do that at today's market's speed and scale is a great thing that you guys are doing to facilitate that collaboration. And of course, the security. Let's kind of take a double click now into the different integrations that Sneak has with AWS services. I know there's quite a few. There's quite a few. The biggest one, probably the easiest one for, for the integrations is the native integration that we have with Code Pipeline. So it makes it easy for developers as they're uh, finishing their builds and, and, and deploying to have an automatic security check that comes in, uh, understands if there's things that need to be uh, fixed before this really should be released and then they can fix it uh, and go forward. But we integrate across uh, with our API across a lot of other services, ECR, EKS, um, code builder, so that wherever the developer is working, there's a way for us to, to, to integrate with them as they're building across their AWS development process. Okay, so giving them plenty of opportunity. Let's dig into the platform. Talk to me about the platform, how it's really aimed at developers. You alluded to this a little bit, but I'd like to kind of take a double click into the technology. Sure, the, the platform, it, part of it is that idea of it, we've wrapped it all as a developer tool. The, the thing that makes Sneak unique in, the, in this is not only do we have the idea that we wanted to shift left in time, but we wanted to shift left in ownership. So the developer is our primary user and we built a tool that is a developer tool that happens to do security. And we've extended that tool into a platform by enabling it to connect into the developer's tools, sharing information across uh, different elements of what it's securing. So for example, the open source uh, that we're scanning for you and testing to find for vulnerabilities, we're also looking at the vulnerabilities in your code and, and where they may overlap or intersect, we can adjust priorities so that you might not need to fix something. Let's say you're using an open source uh, package that has a vulnerability, but your code's never going to access that. You don't need to fix it. So you can prioritize that one lower, right? Same thing with Kubernetes and containers. You may have a container vulnerability, but the way you're going to leverage the container that won't be used. So we can adjust the priority to make it easy for the developer. And that's the other big thing that's different about a developer security platform than a typical security tool. A typical security tool is an audit tool. It's designed to output, here are all the things you have a problem with. A developer security tool is a fixing tool. It's just defined to say, here are the problems you have to develop with, here's how you fix it and go back to building. And that, that prioritization is a big part of that because you can say, here's what you don't need to worry about. And then you can focus the rest of your energy on helping developers fix the problem, either by giving them really good advice or automating it for them and saying, Have, here's a button, click that, we'll generate a pull request and your problem is, is fixed. That must go a long way to improving developer productivity, one, uh, facilitating that speed and the agility with which they need to work, but also from a, a, a developer kind of crowdsourcing, crowd swell perspective, I imagine Talk to me about what some of the voices are of the developers that are in your community. What are some of the things that they're saying in terms of how much faster they're able to work, they're able to, to get those priorities established uh, with automation so much faster? Well, that's the biggest thing is they're able, the, the productivity gain happens because of the benefit of shift left, right? You're testing earlier, you're finding it at an earlier time when it's easier to fix but that's because they're the ones doing it, right? If they're waiting to hand off to an auto report and then it comes back, even if somebody is, is giving them them audit faster, it's still after they've moved on. And the other way people try to solve it is they'll, they'll say, well, I'll take a security tool then and hand it to the developer and they can run it. But so developers are not security experts. So the tool needs to understand what they know and what they don't know uh, and, and working in that flow. And that's what developers generally say to us because Sneak makes it easy to work, but also focuses on the fix and helps them guide them to that, to that answer, uh, then they're able to go much faster. When we're evaluated by companies who are looking for a security solution, if the developers get involved in that evaluation, they'll choose Sneak. So I'm curious a little bit about as, as the head of, of product marketing, I'm, I'm thinking customer advisory boards, things like that. Mm -hmm. How, what's the collaboration like between Sneak and, and the developers to really tune and uh, push the, the technology forward. I imagine it's quite collaborative. 
it's quite collaborative and it's across a lot of, uh, of spectrum. So we, we do have a customer advisory board and that's generally leaders, right? That's either security leaders or development leaders or operations leaders who are in that advisory board. And they're giving us input on things they need for program-wide governance or program-wide adoption. We also have a developer community where we're talking directly to developers and that's where we get a lot of, hey, here's how I could use this better as a developer. And that guides where we focus uh, features that, that help developers work better, whether it's integrations with their IDEs or whether it's the way we present information, help them prioritize. And then the third part is we have a lot of people using the tool because it has a free model, right? We're As a developer tool, we have a freemium model. There's a level of sneak that developers can use that they don't need to pay for. That's not a temporary trial, it's forever if you want to use it at that level. And we can observe what they're doing. So that observability gives us another insight into where folks get challenged, run into to, to struggles, and then we can look to address those uh, in our roadmap as well. So, so all of that together really helps us drive the product forward. What is the perspective from the analyst view? You talked a little bit about the perspective from the customer. We'll get into a customer story in a bit, but I'd love to know what are the Gartners saying? Well, Gartner uh, especially put us, uh, we debuted in their Magic Quadrant for Application Security uh, last year, and we, we debuted as a visionary in sort of the highest part of the visionary quadrant you could get in before you crossed over into leader, which is kind of unheard of for, for a first time into the, into the quadrant. And the main reason for that is they have built, the way those, those Magic Quadrants are, are built is they have key capabilities and they score companies against key capabilities and they weight those capabilities, you know, by order of importance. And Gartner has started to put some of this notion of developer security and cross cloud native application security into those key capabilities. And those tend to align really well with what Sneak does. So they have, a, a for example, a software composition, which is sort of open source security uh, analysis. We're first, we're, we're the top ranking. Uh, in that we're the top ranking in container security, we're the top ranking in developer enablement. So that's pulling us uh, there. So, so Gartner and the analyst community is seeing this same demand uh, coming from their customers and, and that's really aligning to where our vision is. And in terms of kind of propelling that vision forward, the voice of the customer, the voice of the analyst, aligning with what you guys are doing to kind of lead the vision going forward. I want to get into some of the intelligence Mm -hmm. before we kind of break into a customer example. Talk to me a little bit about Sneak Security Intelligence, what the key capabilities are and some customers that are leveraging it. Sure, the biggest thing is with all the developer tool wrapping that needs to be in this product, and it is a developer tool, it's got a developer's heart, but it has to have a security brain uh, because it still is a security tool. There are some developer tools we try to have little check the box capabilities of, security and, and they'll crowdsource for vulnerabilities uh, potentially. But if you're doing this, you need to make sure that all the vulnerabilities that could be found are, are in the database to be able to be found, that uh, the database is comprehensive, that it's timely, they get in very quickly, that it's accurate, you don't waste time on false positives because that will turn developers off faster than anything. Um, and that it's actionable. So when it does find something, it helps you uh, go forward with it. And that's where Sneak's really focused on. So we collect uh, data from multiple public sources. We also have a fairly large proprietary research team that curates that information, determines what needs to go in. Sometimes we'll adjust priorities. And we also get a lot of contributions from other sources like community contributions. Again, that big free user base of ours is giving us input. Academia, uh, open source groups uh, are also in their social media trends. So if we see something trending on Twitter, then that'll not only get it into the database, but it'll drive prioritization. Um, and that's a big part of, of what's uh, in Sneak Intel, which is the name we use for our uh, vulnerability database. We also have a machine learning algorithm that's constantly looking at all the code in public, uh, in public applications and repositories. And we use that to train for our own uh, so, uh, uh, proprietary code testing tool. Um, but it also just gets a lot of, it finds things uh, there as well. So it brings uh, a really good source of information uh, that helps people make sure you're finding the vulnerabilities, you're prioritizing them correctly and fixing them. And so Amazon's one uh, who is the, you know, one of the folks that's using that tool, we're uh, one of the primary sources of, of Amazon Inspector for open source uh, vulnerabilities. 
um, as well as a bunch of other security companies like Rapid7, Tenable, uh, and, uh, and others. One of the things I was reading from, I, I'm always kind of looking at the differentiators and I'm sure you are as the head of product marketing and partner marketing, but it sounds like the database can is, is a key differentiator, finding vulnerabilities up to what is it, 46 days faster than competitors? Yeah, I mean, faster than especially public sources, which are the easier ones to, to know how you're doing against, but that's a big part of us. So when I talked about those categories, that's really what we measure ourselves against. How are we doing in terms of comprehensive? Do we have the vulnerabilities that we should have? So we have over four times the number of vulnerabilities as the next largest uh, publicly available uh, database. We find them faster, so timely. So that's that 46 days getting it in uh, faster or faster than other uh, public sources they get into our uh, solution. Uh, and then accuracy, again, we it's not a stat we can test because you can't test it just from the database. You have to run the tools of our of others in the space and we don't have those, but making sure that you're not hitting a lot of false positives is a big part of it as well. Got it, okay. And we only have a couple minutes left, but there's two more areas that I want to dig into with you. Mm -hmm. Just crack crack the surface. One is log four shell. I was reading, Sneak says, this we were the perfect solution at the perfect time. Unpack that for me in the next minute or so. Yeah, and that's a bit, and it kind of wraps back to what we were talking about earlier. Everybody's using open source. If you're in the Java world, a lot of folks had log for shell uh, and were using log for shell for logging uh, as a part of their uh, as a part of their applications. And so a lot of our customers, I think it was over 30%, 36% of our paying customers had the vulnerability. And you would only have the vulnerability if you're Java. So it's a very large percentage of our Java using uh, customers had the vulnerability. Um, but because they were using Sneak, they were able, once we put it in the database, which we did the day it was disclosed, they were able to find it and fix it very quickly. So 91% of our customers fixed that vulnerability in just two days, 98%, uh, because this was a rolling thunder event, right? There was a vulnerability and then there was a second vulnerability uh, in, the, in the fix. And then there was a vulnerability even in the fix of that. So the second vulnerability that came out because everybody had been ready for it uh, from the first time, 98%. Uh, fixed within two days, whereas the median number of days to generally fix a vulnerability is over two months. So really fast uh, uh, addressing the solution. Love those stats there. Those are really impressive. And speaking of stats, I wanted to get into just really quickly a, a case study that really shows that Lastian is one of your customers, one of your many customers, big developer community there, about 3,500 developers. Give me some kind of the, the high level business outcomes that Atlassian is, is, is uh, achieving, thanks to Sneak. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the biggest one is that almost 99% of their applications are deployed in containers. So being able to have the containers uh, tested for vulnerabilities as they're being deployed before they're being deployed uh, is huge for them to reduce the risk of uh, a vulnerability. They, they had a 65% reduction in high severity uh, container volumes a few months after using Sneak across all those developers, which really reduces your, uh, your risk. Uh, profile of your of your cloud native applications. They're obviously a big AWS uh, user as well. Um, so so for them that was the big thing. And again, it goes to that scale, right? They've got three 3,500 developers, more than 3,500 developers. If you try to go through the security team and have the security team fixing all those things, you'll just never catch up. Got it. Last question: Where can I get this? Available through the AWS marketplace. Marketplace. You mentioned the freemium model. Give folks kind of a direction on where to go. Yeah, so I would say if you are a if you're someone in the security team, if you're a buyer, uh, the AWS Marketplace is a great place to go because you can probably leverage your existing spend commits with AWS. It's easy to purchase, easy billing, et cetera. If you're a developer, uh, then there is this free uh, version where you might go and just start using it and get comfort for it. And if you are a buyer, talk to your developers because there's a pretty good chance someone in your company that's a developer is already using Sneak will be comfortable with it. These solutions are only successful if the developers actually use it. You can't shift left unless the developers pick it up uh, and use it. So using the one the developers are already using is probably a good idea. Awesome, Robbie, this has been a great conversation. So much momentum at Sneak. Um, you're the third sneaker I've gotten to speak to in the last month and a half, it's pretty exciting. But thanks for walking us through the technology, the capabilities, the differentiators, the voice of the customer, the voice of the analyst. We appreciate your insights and your time. And we look forward to the next time we talk to you. Terrific, Lisa, I look forward to it as well, but there's a lot more sneakers to go through before you get back to me again, I guess. 
<laughs> I look forward to adding to my repertoire of sneaker interviews. Ravi, thanks so much. Thank you. For Ravi Myra, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching this CUBE interview as part of the AWS Startup Showcase. Stick around, more great content coming up next.